Do you believe that the documentary crew was baited? Je n'en ai pas la moindre idée. N'est-ce pas Rudolf qui a signé la lettre? Ou bien toi, cher Appa, qui les a entraînés dans ce piège? Hmm. Peut-être n'est-ce que la confrontation éternelle de l'homme avec la nature qui les a attirés? Peut-être n'est-ce qu'un réflexe? Tu vas goûter le vin de Milan. Je suis le seul à faire du vin rouge sur la côte est. Tous les autres font du blanc. C'est le secret de Milan. La robe de ces vins de Québec est stoulée et goulée en bouche. Les lahandakarai, spécialement choisis pour vous. Tabernacle, tu ne veux pas goûter mon vin Alors parle français, pose tes questions en français. Que crois-tu Nous sommes en Nouvelle-France ici. Nous avons fait sécession des États-Unis. Vous nous avez laissé pourrir, sans ressources énergétiques, sans rien. Donc nous, Acadiens, avons rétabli notre autorité sur ce territoire. Bois. Hmm. Tu es radiodiffuseur Je l'étais aussi avant la Révolution, mais je n'avais pas toute cette technologie. Si je l'avais eue, j'aurais pu toucher plus de monde. Hmm, pourquoi pas un ménage à trois hmm, Ça te tente Taste this Quebec red with your Chanel. I've been dying to ask you the significance of the feathers that the vacation landers wear. We see you hand one to Nola from the footage we recovered from Ben Marshall. Well, the coloration of the feathers is a means of identification and protection. Bacon and I came up with it so we can identify people and pick out strangers. So the feather serves effectively as a hall pass in the UTM. You might say that. And I can't help but notice your bandages. From the footage we recovered, you've had these wounds for around two years. Do you keep injuring yourselves? No, they're hereditary. You see, uh, the original wound was sustained by the great General Jebediah Worthington at the Battle of Antietam. Took a blue belly mini ball to the skull. He survived and passed it down from generation to generation. So you can see how history repeats itself. This doesn't make any sense. What doesn't make any sense, pretty lady, is women wearing pants and the Higgs boson park. Yankee! Kendra, what are you looking at? Elmer, can you tell us what you're looking at? Don't you mind him, Miss Milton? He's always staring off into space, and he talks about love in his sleep. Well, actually, I once was in love. It was a long time ago in a different age. 
People frowned upon my hoarding. Her name was Hester. She gave us Cheyenne. Taught us how to make squirrel jerky. Killed her with my infatuation. She died of a brutal love. Now you see here, Cheyenne has uh, two pappies. <laughs> Elmer's dialed back his love a bit that uh, he doesn't uh, have another missing. Activate the low camera. Hester haunts me now. She's here? Mommy! Are you here? Mommy! Hester isn't happy about my love and feelings for Nola the pretty lady. She's got nothing to worry about. My understanding is she ran off with that crazy guy Carl. Rudolph, you know, Bacon's brother. I would have loved that pretty lady like no other. Good thing Nola dodged that bullet. I had Bill Fanny a cycle generator system, which she was having trouble with. You know, she approached me about building uh, a bicycle seat made in, entirely out of ointment. And for that, she would sabotage an entire documentary crew. Annie was very disappointed that I couldn't make that for her. Misdirected anger, I guess. Could it have been Bradley Wexler, AKA Bacon? No, no, no. Bacon is a peacemaker. He's not an instigator. I have a, I have a special relationship with Bacon. Could you elaborate on that? Well, it's it's not news to most people that he blew up his own car dealership. But what few people realize is that he was seriously injured in the explosion. And I found him. Well, well he found me. You know, wandering through the woods. Blind. Deaf. And without any skin. Kendra, let's hook this scientist up with a reenactment sequence. Otto. Would you be willing to be part of a montage reenactment that we could insert into this very interview? Yes. As long as you promise to tell the truth about Bacon. Yes, I was, uh, I was peddling in the forest in late summer of 2013. Yes, I remember it quite clearly. I had just invented shoe planters at the request of Sarah. growing tomatoes? <laughs>
holding. I'm tuning in. Friends. We are witnessing a funerary ceremony for Sarah, a revered vacation lander who passed away recently from a long-term illness. She is survived by her son Scratch, who appears not to be in attendance. This is for you, Sarah. Today, we are here to say goodbye to our friend, Sarah. Sarah fought as she lived, the only way she knew, valiantly, with purpose and dignity, up until the very end. Most of you know it was I who attended to Sarah during this time, and... She often spoke of her love for this beautiful, rugged land and the people who stayed on despite this hard life, despite the hard cost of living and maintaining a life here. Her son Scratch was the primary reason she stayed on, and it was the hardest decision she ever made to send him to Indiana to be with Bacon. Her worsening condition left her little choice in the matter of raising Scratch, and it worried her deeply. In the dark night, she would worry. As I sat beside her, I would hear her whisper, Who can you trust? Who do we really know? I... of it. I can't bargain with it. There's no conclusive purpose in the flame or the smoke that leads us to our own. It consumes and consumes and consumes. And still, its appetite is scarcely satiated. You feel good, eh? For all you've given us, you take away. So you can gauge our, our appreciation for your gift. 
We admire your burn! We admire it. Our lineage is broken! Our ashes bear witness to your victory! All Zane! I like to call the Colican! All Zane! We cannot remember if we have disappeared. about today's events. Everybody knew this was gonna happen. Sarah was a brave woman and a great cook. I think that's why she requested the fire. This whole thing reminds me of a cookout. A cookout of herself. <laughs> I don't know what Pedair's so bent out of shape about. <laughs> One less customer just means the prices go up for everybody else. Hell, all, all, all Sarah ever bought were herbs anyway, and, and, and the good wife, Dr. Janice, made Pader give those to her, because she always had scratch down to get them. And even Pader can't charge a kid for trying to help a sick mother. That's just wrong, isn't it? Hey, how's your crew holding up? You guys have everything you need? We had to have some extra batteries for that. Huh? What are you going to do when it all runs out? When it all dies? You might want to stock up now. You want to keep Pedair happy, don't you? You wouldn't, wouldn't want Pedair to be disappointed, would you? Right? Right? Oh, we will miss Sarah, the poor dear. Oh, uh, I'll never forget the time she served the psychedelic fiddleheads to the documentary crew. Whoa, they weren't expecting that. <laughs> she drugged the documentary crew? Drugged is a strong word. I would say supplemented their diet is a nicer phrase. So would you agree that the UTM lied to the documentary crew? Were the people being documented Honest with the documentors who were there under a false pretense. Lady, what outfit do you work for, huh? I, the jig is up. We knew Sarah. Not a lot. We just came here. We've been here on the territories about a year. Mm -hmm. Nine months, uh, seven weeks, 14 days, three hours. Yeah. yeah. We met online. Christian mingle. We're not Christians. No, we're both faking it. You usually stand a better chance, you know. Yeah. She's got a business venture she's working on. Uh -huh. Unguents and oils. Tell her. They are urine based. Cat urine. It's a, it's, it's really stays, it sticks to the skin, you know. I test it on Travis. <laughs> Thank He's you. kind of like a pet himself. And we do tiny house living, which functions like a crate for Travis. So I'm sad. I just felt like he had a really strong essence. And as you can see, I am developing some perimenopausal acne. So I know that I don't have a whole lot of eggs left. And um, <laughs> well, I'm just hoping to grab as much of Travis's essence as I can while I still have a chance. I have not menstruated in seven months, though, so we're trying our hardest. And I'm not as you can see, so something's going on. Yeah, <laughs> could be my seed. Oh, it gets hot in that trailer. Yeah, but it's, it's cozy, you know, it's all mm -hmm. we need. 
bed. He cannot get away. And that's the thing, she, really. He just she, can't get away. She deadbolts the door. Yeah. I move things around, too. I put little things in front of the windows and doors. Different places every time. I learned that the Boston Strangler taught me that. Read a lot about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Put things in front of the doors, and then people come in. They knock them down, and you're ready for them. You can see. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's... I get, I get uh, you know. You can get it. Get on the camera. What, what is that? You know. Oh, good what do we have here? Good uh, That's just, you know, she gets at me. Just, <laughs> can't get away, like I it's said. You know Should I, mean? I be worried? No, my goodness, no. Oh. I am a one-man oh, no. woman. One boy, really. He's young. He's very young. Don't tell her. <laughs> and I am not. <laughs> Don't tell her. Young. <laughs> <clears throat> Getting older by the minute. We really can't waste too much time talking to you here. Because I can feel something happening down there. We, okay, and I, I definitely uh, would love for you to be in a safe place and not here for that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guys, we need to pick up some shots. Hi. Wow. This is uh, this is kind of. <laughs> I know you. Were you in that mm. Boston interview thing? Mm, yeah. The job thing. Yeah. Yeah. How? how who? Who got that? I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. You are. Mikey. Oh, hi, Mikey. How are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing here? I'm just checking out, man. Yeah. Life in the. Uh, UTM, huh? Yeah. <laughs> pretty yes, cool, is. man. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> is that coffee? Yes, yes. Ugh. We just had a funeral for one of the vacation landers, and it's been a sad day. Yeah, it's a bummer, dude. Mm -hmm. But it's an honorable way to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, where do I get one of these feather things I see the people wear? Will that get me into like the cool off the grid clubs and whatnot? I suppose you could probably find one on a dead bird. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I probably got a lot of those dead birds. Right. That's awesome. Right. Look at that. This is awesome. I need a snack. Yeah, I, my brother gave me something like gave me some gorp. What's that all about? Gorp. This is weird. Fuck, I think I dropped it. Mm. Is there any uh, kind of like convenience store or anything? No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think so. Oh man, do you have any food? I don't. I don't. Oh. Um, I was interviewing a couple here that said, you know, they smelled some chicken. What's the? Can you eat the? Is this? Um. So guys, we need to pick up some shots. I'm so hungry. There was an animal out here earlier, a mouse. Yeah. How do you tell if a twig is edible? Uh, you know, it's roughage, so I just would eat anything. You know, just just eat it. But will it hurt when I poop? There's fiddleheads. I heard there are fiddleheads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kendra. Oh yeah, Kendra. <laughs> 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 that makes some adjustments. <laughs> 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 